Hi guys, I'm going to show you today how you can make your sparkler accents and your glow stick accents at weddings look really good, um, especially if you've used flash and the flash has overpowered the sparklers or the glow sticks and you need to add them back in. I'm going to show you how to do that in Photoshop. It's incredibly simple. Um, you'll be shocked how simple it is and you don't have to outsource and you can save your money. So. This is just something like a good technique to have in your back pocket. I've used it for many things. Um, you know, say sometimes clients will ask if you can add in like a, a deceased pet or a family member into a photo. This is the same technique. So just a good thing to have in your back pocket. <clears throat> if you've never opened Photoshop alone before, um, it could be confusing. I totally get that, like from a totally new editor's perspective. A lot of you will go through Lightroom to get to Photoshop. Um, all you have to do is double click the icon, it'll pop up. And then to open up your photos, there's up here in the left hand corner is a little button that says open. You just click that and then you select the photo you want. Open that and there you go. So this is the photo that we're gonna um, color our glow sticks in. <clears throat> but the first thing we have to do is find a source image for glow sticks. So you may have one of your own that has glow sticks that you can utilize or if you don't the there are many 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 free photos online that you can use without paying um, people will just upload them for others creatives to use I got this one on um, Shutterstock maybe I don't remember exactly where but I found this online for totally free so we're gonna open up another photo here we're gonna go file open and then I have a picture of glow sticks. So <clears throat> if you're not familiar with Photoshop at all, that's totally fine. You don't have to know a thing about Photoshop to be able to do this. I've been working in Photoshop for like 23, 24 years, and I don't know probably 80% of what <clears throat> you know this stuff does. So don't feel overwhelmed. I'm just gonna show you exactly what you need. So just re the real basics, at the top we have um, our brush controls, like brush size, brush flow, density, stuff like that. On the left hand side we have our tools and our brushes, and if you're not sure where to find or what they are, just hover over and you'll get a little description here from Photoshop, and you can even watch a quick video um, to give you a quick tutorial on how to use. And then the other thing we're going to be using is down here in the right corner, we have our um, where we um, manipulate our layers. Everything in Photoshop is done in layers. Um, instead of like Lightroom, it's just basically all one image. And then we're going to use um, our adjustments a little bit like brightness and contrast and hue and saturation. So that's kind of the lay of the land and really all you need to know. So what we need to do is obviously get these to look like they're glowing. So first we're going to start out with our glow stick image. And it doesn't even have to be similar. It just has to be an image of what you need. So let me show you what I mean. Um, I'm going to cut one of these out and paste it onto my original photo. So there's a couple ways you can cut things out. Um, you can use the lasso tool, which is literally it's kind of remedial you're just drawing around um, and that'll select it um, and then if you need to undo what you've done you can hit control or command Z depending on if you're a Mac or, or PC but I think the easiest way to cut things out is um, there's four icons down here is the object selection tool so I'm going to click that and then all you have to do is hover over an, an object and it will select it for you if you guys hear my dogs I'm so sorry they're very loud dogs and I can't I can't make them be quiet so it is what it is um, but okay so I'm just gonna click that <clears throat> and after I click it it's selected now how do I cut it out come up to edit and cut it's that simple now that glow stick is on my clipboard and I'm gonna go back to my original image just by clicking up here at the top and I'm going to paste it. So I'm going to come back up to edit and paste. And it's going to look ridiculous at first, right? Like that's way too big. How are we going to get it 
onto the glow sticks and to look real. So what we need to do is transform this glow stick. So we're going to come up to edit all the way down to free transform. Where is it? There it is. I use the shortcut for free transform because I use it a lot. So it's control or command T. So I'm going to use that from now on. But if you forget that or whatever, you can just go to edit and free transform. <clears throat> That'll bring up a box where you can manipulate the image. So I'm going to make this smaller. And then if you hover around the corner, you'll see this little sort of curved arrow icon that lets you twist it. So I'm going to twist it so it's in the same direction as my glow stick up here. And I'm just going to get it into the general vicinity. It doesn't have to be exact, just, just general. Um, there we go. Now, what I need to do is erase the extra that is overlapping the original glow stick. So I'm going to come and click my eraser tool, which is down here in the middle. Um, there we go. Now I've got my eraser tool and I want it to be a little bit bigger so it goes quicker. So up here at the top, remember, is how we control our brushes, size, um, density, stuff like that. So I'm going to make my brush bigger. That's good. And then the next thing I'm going to do, and I want my hardness at zero because I want it to be a feathered edge. If you put your hardness at 100, it's going to be a straight edge, totally clean line. Um, but since this is glowing, I want it to be a soft edge. So I'm going to leave my hardness at zero. Now we're going to come over to our bottom um, right hand corner here. And I'm on, you can see that I have a background layer at the bottom. And then I have, which is just the photo. And then on top of that, I have layer one, which is my glow stick. Now, if you want, you can click that and rename it glow stick. You don't have to, because we, we won't be working with tons of layers today. It's really helpful if you have tons of layers to know what's what and maybe rename them, but we don't, you don't have to do that. Um, and then, so what we're gonna do is take our opacity down on that layer, which is gonna allow us, see that, allow us to see what is underneath. And that's gonna allow us to do a really clean erase. So I've got my opacity down so I can see what's underneath, and I'm just erasing around that extra glow stick color. There we go. Now I've got the general shape down and I'm going to put my opacity back up to 100 and see how I did. Pretty good. I'm going to just do a little more touch up there, but all in all that looks pretty good. Now the other thing I want to show you is that you can manipulate your layers individually. So say I want to change the saturation of the glow stick, I want to make it more saturated and maybe brighter and I don't want to affect the background, I can do that. Um, just hover over your glow stick layer and double click. It's gonna bring up this box and you're gonna go up to um, mask all objects. So click that. All right, now we're working on just the glow stick. So we can come up to adjustments and we have hue and saturation, brightness, contrast, curves, levels, etc., etc. So you can make any change you want to that glow stick. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit more saturated and I'm going to come back up to adjustments now and I'm going to use levels to make it look a little bit more glowy. So with levels, you're just changing your dynamic range, which is the amount of space between your darkest point and your lightest point. So our darks are on the left and our lights are on the right. So I'm going to take my right point, my light point here, and bring it in. Now watch the glow stick when I do this. See how it starts to sort of, well, glow? <laughs> so I'm gonna bring that in to make it glow a little bit. And I'm done. I feel like that is a great glow stick. And once I feel like I'm done, I know this all looks really confusing, just don't even worry about it. It's all you gotta do to get rid of all that is um, there's like a little icon that's three or four horizontal lines. Click that and you're going to come down to flatten image. Now what that does is get it gets rid of the layer 
and makes it all one image. So now if you were done with this, you could export it and print it and whatever else. It's just one image now. So I want to show you another way that you could do potentially do this because I know a lot of people would be like, why don't you just use AI like generative fill to, you know, fill in your glow sticks. You could try that, but let me show you what's going to happen. I'm going to use my object selection tool and select a glow stick. Now I'm going to click generative fill and I can use a prompt, um, which I would want to do because I don't think AI is smart enough to know that's a glow stick. So I'm going to say, um, make it, let's see, let's say bright, saturated, yellow. Oops, get off there. And it's, yeah, it's just, it's a little bit too literal. Um, it looks like it can tell that it's like the shape of a glow stick, but that doesn't really look like a glow stick when you zoom out. Now, when you use um, generative fill, you have they'll give you three choices. This one is what? It, what even is that? Like seriously, what is that? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, but it doesn't look like a glow stick. And then this one is not bright, saturated, or yellow. So I have no idea what went wrong there. Um, but you know, even if you did get a result out of one of them that you loved, say it looked like the perfect glowing glow stick, um, you can't recreate it in another. Even if you use the same prompt, it will never come up with the same thing twice. So that's why you really can't use AI for this kind of um, thing. So um, if you want to get rid of a layer, this is there's many ways to do it, but this is how I do it. I come down to my layers and I there's a little eyeball icon next to each one. I will just click off of it and then I will come back up and flatten my image and it'll say, do you want to discard your hidden layers? Yes. So now I'm back to where I was. So then we'll just go back to our um, glow stick image, click our green one, selected, cut it out. Now it's on our clipboard, come back and paste it. Now I'm going to Command T to free transform, and I'm just going to start pasting them on to the rest of the glow sticks. Um, it's really that simple, um, and I have a finished picture that I'll pull up that you'll see how good it actually looks when they're all done. But same thing, I'm just going to get it in the general vicinity. You can zoom in a little bit if it helps. I'm going to pull my opacity down on that layer so I can see what's underneath. Come to my eraser, erase around it. There we go. It doesn't have to be exact, um, especially with something like, you know, glow sticks that are glowing. Like you can get away with it not being totally exact. Now we'll put our opacity back up to 100, and that looks pretty good. I'll zoom back out and yep now say I want that one to be a little bit more opaque um, let me make some adjustments to it so I'll double click on that layer come up to mask all objects adjustments let's do hue saturation I'll give it a little more saturation and then I'm gonna do levels on it and I'm going to pull my darks in just a little bit. There we go. And you could even pull your lights in a little bit. So that looks good. I'll flatten it and just continue on like that. The other thing I want to show you is um, how you can do sparklers. Because I know sparkler accents are like oftentimes we'll hear in the Reverend and Oak group, um, my sparklers didn't show up on my sparkler accent. What am I going to do? So I'm going to show you how to do that. And real quickly, I'm going to erase one of these glow sticks so that we can use this as an example because I don't have um, I don't have a photo of Sparkler X handy, so we'll just use this one. And I'm just using um, the clone tool to get the, most of this out. I'm not being exact with it at all. So now we're going to put a sparkler in her hand. So I'm going to open up an image of a 
sparkler here file open I've already found one a couple of them on the internet so I'm just gonna click one and here we go so I'm gonna get now I need to cut that sparkler out so I'm gonna come to object selection tool this can be a little bit tricky because um, you know sparklers have so many like jagged edges sort of so if it's not selecting what you want it to select that's okay it gives you the option to like um, put a box around what you want selected and then it will try to like see what you wanted it to select see now it selected the sparkler for me and I can cut it out I'm coming back to edit cut and it's on my clipboard oops now I'm gonna come back to my source image or my base image edit paste there we go now I'm going to command T to get my transform box up there I can change the size I can change the angle so I'm going to change the angle to fit her hand <laughs> obviously she wasn't grabbing something as small as a sparkler so it doesn't look quite, look quite right but if you had like a sparkler you know photo it would look better I'm just showing you the basic real basic concept so yeah so that's how I would do that um, looks fantastic right wait here we go sometimes you have to just click um, return to get it to take and then flatten the image and voila like that's really all it takes and then I would go through and do each one and I would have a photo where my people looked sharp and noiseless and just perfect and glowing glow sticks so let me show you what it would look like finished I believe it's this one nope that was my copy it was this one there we go see so there's our finished image there's our copy see how much happier is a bride gonna be when her glow sticks are glowing than if her glow sticks look white obviously she's gonna be happier with the glow sticks glowing image and that's that I hope that helps um, like I said you can use this concept this cut and paste concept for anything if you needed to um, you know add in a deceased loved one which is not my favorite you know concept to do but a lot of times it'll be really meaningful to a client um, I would probably only do it as if they asked for it but um, that's how you do it you can use your object selection tool obviously you'd have to have a, a photo of the person that you want to insert in the photo you just click them um, you know come up to edit and cut it'll cut the person out and then you come to your you know other photo and you edit paste now you're going to want to command or control T to transform that layer and you could put them wherever you wanted and then you just change your opacity put your opacity down and you have someone who's there but you know faded a little bit and this can be really meaningful um, for families you know and you can place them wherever you want and then just take your eraser um, I'm gonna make it a little bigger to make it faster take your eraser and erase out the parts that you don't want like the parts that would be hidden behind somebody else um, yeah and then just adjust your opacity to taste and you've got exactly what the client asked for so it's that simple and you didn't have to use anything terribly confusing in Photoshop and that's that so um, yeah always let me know you guys if there's anything you really want to see or like you don't want to have to pay an outsourcer to do you'd rather do yourself I'm always happy to make a quick tutorial I don't know everything in Photoshop but I've like I said I've been using it for many years and I know the um, the most useful things I think so yeah 
don't hesitate to let me know if there's something I can help you with. And um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.